Welcome back to the Crew Build Series. This is episode number 87, and so last episode we uh, moved the stall aircraft back from the Arctic down to Draymore, then uh, took out the new helicopter, went over to the uh, wind turbine trying to do a rescue. The rescue was not there, so then we went and did a different rescue. And so I brought the helicopter back here, put it in the base, and I went ahead and I built a... It's a contain self-loading container trailer that can haul two containers. And so we're going to go ahead and take that. And what we're going to try to do is go here from FJ down to JSI docks. And we're going to offload some containers and bring some back. This way, we should be able to make some money on this and not have to buy any bases. So if the uh, if the Urim Wind power plant has some more profitable Containers, we'll grab those, but uh, we'll have to look at them when we get there. So let's go ahead and we'll grab a tractor here. So we'll use the road train tractor. And I actually need to do something real super quick here. Let's open up the... Let's grab this here, and I just need to pull this container out of here. I did a couple changes to this, and I did it with the test container in there. So I need to pull it out. And now I think this is even wider because it has the hard points on there. But hopefully it doesn't interfere with anything if I select everything. I think it's good. I think we're close. Uh, we're far, far enough away. Let's do this and this, and we'll cut that. A little bit of testing I did on this, so this should be working pretty well. All right, so let's load the road train tractor. And then we'll stick this on top. On its back. All right, as you can see, it's in position. So this trailer is already in position, so we can just paste it, and it's good to go. All right, so this is model off some real self-loading container trailers. So you put those arms down if you're just traveling, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to leave them up because we're going to go load from uh, FJ here. So one thing I really like, I was thinking about this, of how the devs have designed this. You know, you can kind of tell logistics isn't their, you know, uh, isn't their area of expertise, and it makes sense, of course. You know, they're software developers. Not uh, logistics people, and so, you know, it seems like they've gotten a little bit better with logistics over time. I think Industrial Frontier kind of, you know, they had some uh, stumbles on that with logistics. But one of the nice things is FJ, you know, I don't think every base should be like this, but FJ, for example, has an airport, it has a seaport, it has a train port, and it has a container port. And so what this allows us to theoretically do is we can take containers that say have to go to FJ and we can fly them. Let's say we need to go to Sawyer North. We can fly via uh, an aircraft, you know, an airplane. Let's put an airplane, of course, because any VTOL can land anywhere. And I try not to do too much of that because I find it incredibly boring. And so I can take an airplane, which in game doesn't have much use because of the way they set up the logistics. Well, I can take an airplane. I can load a container onto an airplane. I can fly it to, I think it's. O'Neill. It's O'Neill or Clark. I think it's O'Neill. And then I can take a truck from there and quickly drive it to Sora North. And that makes it cool where I can actually do some stuff with airplanes. And so that's kind of neat. So I wish they would do that more. You know, it doesn't have to be every, but it's, say they had two bases. I think the Arctic would be a prime place to have an airport next to the container port, next to the train port. And, you know, have it where I could, for example, load a container in an airplane, take it right there. And I just need to move it a little bit. So here's JSI. That's four grand. That's uh, two grand. So there's six total to get over there. What's that? That's three grand. We're not taking that anyway. But uh, Sawyer North. Uh, we're going to look for JSI. And we're going to look for urine wind power plant. So that's five. Urine's a little bit further away. BBG, Komodo. So that's six for urine. Komodo's eight. Let me see. Komodo. So there's a three for JSI. So we have seven for JSI, six for, uh, six for urine so far. So we'll just quickly run through all these. That one's expired. That's fine. I would love it if they did some small cargo, too. That would be great. You know, I just built a cargo plane, and that would really be cool to be able to do some more, like, small cargo. I, you know, these are nice small containers. You know, some of the containers I'm used to are, like, 53 feet. 
Uh, that's pretty much all we ran. And so these are about half containers. You can put two of these. So we can do 12 to urine. Let's do a urine win, I think. So let's go ahead and grab those. So we have this one here. So orange diesel. And I saw the other one. It was close. So let's find that one. Let's grab those two. So at first I wanted to do uh, like dolly trailers for this. But the issue is, so right here. So this white hope and then there's the one on the end there. So white hope and that one. I think there might have been another one. Let me see. Probably not. I know the White Hope one goes there, so let's just double check. Okay, so the White Hope one we're going to grab first. So if we did a dolly trailer, you can't really back up um, dolly trailers all that well. You start accordioning. And so th by having this as a standard uh, trailer, I, it makes it a lot easier for me to back up. And so I can more easily get a line. So you see how close I'm going to get there? You want to get really close to these. It helps to load them. And this place, we have nice gaps here. And so, you know, you really get super duper close IRL with this stuff. Like, that's perfect, man. I hit it on the first try. All right, I'll we'll set the brakes. I'll go down into neutral. I need to start doing neutral more. What I should do is if I get out of my seat, it will reset it to neutral. That would be kind of a good idea. Sometimes I have to do weird stuff and jump out uh, during transit. All right, so this is based on some real tech. So... Uh, I'm going to lower the supports. The supports could use some more work, but they do work as it is. So we're going to make contact, and I'm going to push them out, get the magals to touch the ground. And now we're locked to the ground. It might be locked to the container. I have to keep an eye on that. Now, one of the great updates the devs did, which you know they certainly deserve credit for in my opinion, is the rope update. The ability for me to set the ropes. Now, if you notice, I initially put uh, winches on this and the issue is unless you use the larger winches you can't get them synced up well with this the way these work in real life is you generally hook to the bottom anyways and you have a Y chain so it's a chain comes up here and then it has a straight link and so it's a Y and it hangs from here and everything works properly because the container contorts properly because it's with a fixed length well we can do that now I can go to two meters on my rope. I can attach it to here. And you notice it will only go to two meters. And then when I attach it there, it will stay at two meters. So the rope update was a huge update, in my opinion. It was really a, a good and uh, well-needed update. So I'm happy they did that. So I need to get, we're a little bit close here. Let me get under here and try to get, I need to sneak around and not get in here. What I'm going to do instead is, I'm just going to no clip up top because I have it a little bit too close. And it's. There we go. And so that one's attached. And we'll go grab a couple more uh, ropes. And so this is great. The, that rope update was really good. It made it so the ropes had less stretch. And it also made them so that we can set the length we want. So there's two meters. Yeah, I think the only thing that would make it better is if we could do custom lengths because sometimes it's like. You know, by the block, I would say, you know, in quarter. Oh, come on, man. Just grab the sucker. Because, like, it's I'm two meters away. Oh, come on, dude. Grab it. There we go. Ugh. He's just like, I'm hung up on everything. All right, good. So now that goes there. Beautiful. And so this just works. It just works like a sling, and it's going to sling it up on top. You just notice how it's tipping. That's fine. I can fix that with the supports before I actually bring it up. So double tap it. There's two meters. And now we can do this. So I had to make a massive microcontroller panel that wasn't working all that well because I needed to be able to put in... I needed to be able to put in uh, winches. Well, now I don't have to. I can just use the ropes. And so first thing I'm going to do is, as you can see, this is going to push it away. So as you can see, it's going to slide the container away. The container always wants to try to get under the central area here. So now, once that's out, right, what we're going to do is we're going to lift, the, we're going to bring in the supports that unlocks them, bring them up, and then I'm going to bring them all the way out. So now it's a proper distance. We were a little bit on the close side. That's fine. I still haven't really figured out exactly where I can go to now. And this will go all the way out. That will lock them in place. And then, as you can see, I can rotate the trailer off of it. And so we're going to go up on the booms. 
Should be able to rotate the trail. Okay, the trail is going to rotate too much. Let's go. Supports down. Actually, I want them up. There we go. Okay, and now I want to start rotating, the, bring this up. And as you notice, with the ropes, it just slings in. There we go. Now the mass is shifting. Okay, now I want to go booms in. I'm going to take this nice and slow. It's going to swing. We're going to let it swing. Now I want to go down a little bit. Actually, yep, but down a little bit. Down will actually raise it, so I have to come in as I'm doing it to get it to actually come down. So down and in at the same time. Pressing the wrong button there. Up just a hair there. So as you can see, when I go like this, it's going to try to twist it back to straight. And then I'm going to pull it again. And we'll go straight. And now it should start to drag it back in. There we go. Now as I raise it, it will be higher. And it should hopefully float. There we go. All right, now we're going to um, go down. And down the top, boom, so in. And I'm just going to oscillate it until I get it where I want it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, the, the, what do you call it, connectors will auto-grab at some point. So just need to get it somewhat close to where it needs to be. So I'll try to get it back to, so like right there is the highest it will go. And so I'm going to go ahead and activate them. And as I move them in, they should grab. And it might have to rock it a little bit. There we go. Lifted it up again, back down, and in. And we should get grabbed. There we go. All right, so as you can see, that's now attached. All right, good. So let's go ahead, and I want to go down and in. This is, puts it in the travel position. And I will go ahead and grab the. I'll go ahead and grab the uh, ropes in a little bit. So I'll just keep going down on this one, and those, as you can see, will come down. That will take all the tension off of the cables. Perfect. Now what I want to do is I want to go in on my sports, which unlocks my locks. All right, so we're ready to move on to the next one, which is the orange one all the way down. So I'm just gonna. Go around and we'll grab it. So now we have one loaded on there. So one of the benefits of having this self-loading system is I don't need to own the base to be able to go and load and unload containers. You know, you don't need to own the base to do the containers, but you might need it to be able to actually, uh, ha you know, launch the equipment to load. And so seeing that we bring the equipment to load with us, we don't need that. Oh, oh, had a little bit of a crash there. I don't think damage is on. I don't really need damage on. So I think it's an orange diesel. So we have an orange diesel. Is that the one? One of them, I think it's this one up here, right there. All right, so let's get up there. I'm going to use my mirror. So I don't need to be as close as I was last time, so I'm going to keep that in mind and not get so close. But uh, professional operator here, people. So, as you can see, I can easily snake the tractor trailer in there. I've had to do this for quite a long time. So, let's get that in there. And I'm looking at my mirror. And I'm going to try to eyeball it. And brakes. We'll see how close I got. All right. Need to go a little bit further. Go just a hair further. Depth perception in this mirror with the camera is not great. So, I'll just keep going a little bit. And breaks a little bit more maybe breaks after that because i don't want that support to touch the side of the container because the magols as the name would suggest magol and so i don't want that i don't have a backup alarm which is kind of annoying because that easily tells me i'm in reverse all right perfect and breaks so we'll set the tractor and the trailer brakes, and we'll get on out. All right, nice. So our rope's already on here. And so what I'm going to do here is, so I can jump up because it auto sets it to 40. We're going to just dump that rope there. And we'll grab this one, and we'll dump this one here. All right. And then what we'll do is these here, we'll grab these as well. 
I'll dump them on this side. Because it doesn't need to be attached when we do. And you always want to you always want the most of your mass in the front, so it's important that if we're gonna run with one trailer uh, or one container, it's on the front. And even loading it, that uh, gives more stability. We are too close to this. So what I'm going to do here is push this out with the support arms. Or push it with, out with the support arm there. Alright. Go in. And then down. Alright. And now I'm going to start bringing my arms out. I have them on slow for on purpose. You know, it seems like, oh, this is a pain that's going so slow now. But the benefit is, before, that would have been a real nuisance to try to deal with that if it was moving faster, trying to get it right in the right position. So, you know, very often when you're using heavy equipment, it is faster to go slower because, you know, you get it right the first time instead of trying three or four times to get it. That's going to take you much longer, so... Try to RP this, as you can see, I actually get up there, two meters, grab this one, bingo, beautiful. So just RP it as though we're climbing up on the uh, chassis and then doing it. So we jump up on the wheel, on the tires, the wheel is under the tires. All right, and we'll grab this one, BB for two meters. All right, that is done there. And then these... I might have to set these to 4 meters, just because they're a little bit far away, but we'll see how close I am. There we go. There we go. Okay, so that's actually perfect. I can get it. We have a little bit of slack with 2 meters that I can actually grab things, so. Alright, nice. And this one, that one's probably going to be too short to attach. Hmm. That's what I want to do. Alright, let's do this. Let's go ahead and... I want to start raising it, and I'm going to go all the way out. They are all the way out, and this is going to pull the container out. Up, 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 up. I need to be careful here, so I want to go supports out, and there we go. Okay, supports out and up. I'm going to get these supports pushed out to their maximum. Now they're out at maximum. And now we want to go down. And this is going to allow me to rotate the trailer level. All right, so now this should hopefully be close enough in the front for me to grab it because it slid towards the front one. So we'll lower it down. And we'll let this, we'll watch this one as our guide. You notice it's right underneath this. It needs to slide towards that one. It will, once I'm able to hook the rope up, it will try to naturally swing. That's one of the reasons why it's nice to just do it with ropes is I don't have to keep manipulating it with the with the uh, what do you call it? It's the uh, winches. I can just it will naturally do it by gravity. So that's probably grabbing my container so I have to be careful. So as I go up I'm going to have to probably try to disconnect it which is fine. Nope, it's not grabbed. Okay, good. So see how it slid towards the other one? Because it has to. It's gravity. It has to do it. And so that makes it really easy. So I was doing winches before, which were nice because I could actually winch it in if I wanted. It's not pulling it towards it enough. See, that should be sliding towards the front. That's all right. I will lower it, see if I can get it to swing a little bit. So we'll go out up some more. Go down, see if this will swing. Need to get it swinging a little bit. And if I can get it swinging, I can hopefully catch it and get it in between there. Uh, once the hug it. Come on, stop hugging. Okay, so see, I'm trying to swing it out with the supports. All right, now let's see if I can go up and get this to swing inside of that. Nope, it doesn't want to swing inside. Why not? That's the only bad thing with, with not having winches anymore. Let's try to s s fix this and see if I can get a level on this and if I can swing it in with that. It's, see, you can see it's trying to go forward a little bit, so let's try booming it in. So that's an issue. I need a little bit more clearance there. But I can use the supports to help me, so like supports going up now. As you can see, we'll level the trailer out. And so I have some tools at my disposal to try to get this thing swinging. 
You know, you really wouldn't want to be doing this. You'd break the fifth wheel on the tractor, but... So, what do I want to do here? I'm trying to think the best way to do this. You get this turned. See, this is the problem. That's, a, that's on the wrong side. That should be facing... This should be reversed. All right, that's the issue there, is that should be reversed. So I can't really get it to swing because it's pulling it this way instead of in, so it should be on the other side of it. That was an oversight on my part. Let's go ahead and we'll take one container for now instead of screwing around with it too much. You know, this is the testing phase, so I'm not really concerned about it too much. Let's see if I can try one more time to get this in, but it's probably not going to swing because these uh, attach points should be here and the arm should be there. So this is backwards. You know, I played with this quite a bit, so I, you know, eventually going to screw something up here. Okay, let me try something here. Let me see if I can get that pressed and bang my body against it. Come on there, ding dong. Okay, so we want to go up, and I want to bang my body against it. Come on, come on, you dingus. Push, and I want to push, 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 push. It was pushing. Okay. Get out of there. Get out of there. Did I grab something? I did. I grabbed the, uh, I grabbed this connector here. So let's try to push it again because I almost had it. I was able to push it a little bit. So I need to go up, which I need to push that and hit it at the same time. Okay. A little bit tough here trying to get this. We're gonna, I'll try it for a second. If it's still a pain, I'm not going to bother because that's just me making a mistake on that. See, I can get it swinging. Let me see if I can get it swinging enough that I can lift it at the opportune time. So I need to lift it on the in-swing. And in-swing, up. There we go. It's close. In-swing, up. Nope. Oh, it's so close. Let's try see what I can do. I doubt it's going to work. Yeah, it's not going to work. It's hitting that. So all I need to do is move those ropes in. So we're not going to bother with that right now. Let's go ahead and put this down. And uh, we'll just go and I will uh, deliver one. And so that's something uh, is on the to-do list to fix it. So not the end of the world. So this also kind of tells me where I need to be distance-wise. So I'm getting too close. So I need about, about that distance there when I connect them. So that's fine. All right. And so just throw these in the ground for now. I'll clean them up and store them. I'll actually start storing them. That just take me twice long to throw them in the ground and store them. Come on, man. There we go. So uh, proof of concept works fine. It's just, uh, so this one here, as you can notice, this one, it has to load both sides. What I'll probably do is I'll duplicate this and put it there. Put two more connectors there. See, this one is on the outside as well. That's weird, man. Outside, outside. So this one here just needs to be moved inside. That should work. Actually, that's outside. That's outside. That's inside. Okay, so it's this one screwing it up. So probably if I put two here, or if I centralize these somehow, that might work. So I have to look at it. Um, it's not too far off, but, you know, because they're, it's the center one is being used for two operations, it's pulling it, it's, it's favoring it, pulling it towards this side instead of keeping it even because, again, the ropes are the same length. So they're both two meters, but the issue is when it's in that position, it's not. Uh, when this one's closer, it's that, uh, what is it, one, two blocks closer. So it's half a meter closer, so that's why it's misbehaving. So that's not too hard to fix. I'll fix that, and uh, this will be in the repertoire for later. Is this the oh, it expired anyway. <laughs> this was not the right one. Or it expired while I was screwing around, so whatever. So now it's expired. I'm happy that it's gone. All right, good. Let's check the time on the other one before we regret everything I've done in my life. And so let's just stow these in here. All right, that's uh, stowed, and we'll stow them all the way. So they, as you can see, they'll stow flat. All right, so those are stowed, and we're ready to go here. All right, nice. So let's get getting. Have any pictures for this here? Do a little pick. It is always raining. I'm sick of it here. We're not doing rain today. Get out of there. All right. It's constantly raining. All right. Let's go. 
release the brakes, and let's get getting. So this is uh, air and wind, so I know how to get there. I don't have to look at the map. All right, good. So I'm shifting via the tack, so if I have enough torque, tack's telling me essentially how much torque I have, I can shift up. If it doesn't, it shouldn't be shifting up. So there we go. So this is going to be cool. This will allow us to self-load two containers. As you can see, it's reasonably easy to get around them. And so I'm watching the tack as the tack gets down towards 1100. We're going to downshift. We're going to downshift. We're going to downshift. Now we're starting to accelerate again, and we're going to wait until it gets out to about 1400, and we're going to upshift. And we're not going to upshift yet. That's how it is in trucks. It's slow. So that we're actually going right next to Raptor. So maybe we can do that mission, too, if this doesn't take 100 years. And there's 16. Let's see if we keep accelerating. We do. We're going uphill, though. So in trucks, you have to downshift for a lot of hills sometimes. This is a tiny little hill, of course, but you will have to downshift often in trucks. And so that's one thing a lot of people don't understand is, uh, you know, that's why you have so many gears is you want to be in the best gear. As you can see, it's actually um, feathering the clutch a little in 16 here. So let's go down to, we're doing, uh, no, you know what it is? It's not feathering the clutch. That's my governor. I have this speed limited to 70. So we actually have enough power. We could be um, we could be running, you know, 100 miles an hour. But most trucks are governed. So we'll give it a city horn, and we'll give it the air horn. All right. So let's go ahead. And I'll time lapses out here, and I'll see you when we get to your wind.
Well, that was Harry. I might have tagged that goat, but he's alive. I was there was a goat in the road. People, you got to be careful. There are goats in the road. So, saw him last second. If I was in the cab, I probably would have seen him, but it was hard to see him. Back time lapse. So we're back. So uh, almost hit a well. We may have hit a goat gently, but we uh, we dodged the one that was in the road, and they both survived. So I was gonna be quite upset with myself if I ran over a goat. But uh, I almost uh, jacked the trailer. But superior driving skills <laughs> to the rescue. We uh, did. Ooh, this is a hill. This is a hill. We're gonna we're gonna downshift on this one and take this one really slow. I want to check the. You know, it's called high centering. Okay. I pretty much designed this trailer where it wouldn't high center, but we wanted to be careful there. I don't want to destroy my uh, destroy my uh, truck and trailer here. Don't want to roll it right this close to be in there. Is it weird that there is uh, cargo? I don't know. Not, not, not necessarily, but this type of cargo at a um, nuclear power plant. We're just driving around. Sure. <laughs> okay, so there's the spawn. I've actually never... Uh, been down here really. Oh, there's two. Oh, so this is the dual spawn spot. Oh, there's three. Good, good lordy. Good lordy. All right, let's see if we get a message here soon for a delivery here. Hopefully soon. I don't know where the delivery spot is, but we will uh, do a drive through here. But yeah, the goats would have. Uh, it would have upset me if we hit the goat. Come on. Where's my money? What is our money? 141 and change. I haven't got the message yet. I want the message here. Where do we have to go to get this message here? Do not know here. We'll drive around a little bit, see if we can find it. It's not super duper profitable, so it's if I have to lose it. What is that? Is there something floating there? That's weird. Something floating over there, dude. What's that? I haven't been up here much. Not the nuke plant. I love nu uh, all things nuclear, but the um, I've not I've never done a nuclear reactor. It'll be kind of fun to do at some point. Just you know, seems a little bit overcomplicated for doing things, but um, maybe I'll do it at some point. Put out a tutorial. Let's jump out really quick. Breaks. Curious what this is over here. I have not seen the message that we have paid for this sucker. We'll drive along the dock area here. So there's three places to dock. What is this is the question. I'm going to note clip here just to see. Oh, uh, so this is like seawall protection for the uh, nuke plant. So we have mineral storage, which sometimes doesn't work for me. And we have three bases there, it looks like. All right. I'm going to just drive down this row where the benches are, see if I get a message. Let's check it, make sure it's not expired. No, 55 minutes. Oh, we grabbed a BVG. We grabbed the wrong cargo container. Uh. All right. <laughs> All right, so I think we're going to end it there. Uh, this needs to work anyway. And uh, we grabbed the wrong container, so we're not going to get paid for the sucker anyway. But uh, this was fun. It was nice to get this out, uh, test it a little, little bit. You know, we kind of see what this needs. It's pretty pretty close. I've been working on this. I started a video. It actually shows me building it. I might put that out as just a build video. Um, I didn't want to do it as a career build video, as a career build series video. Uh, I kind of want to actually go do something. 
And so uh, I think we'll end it there. Make kind of a short one. Uh, almost had a terrible goat accident. I kind of need to relax after that. <laughs> but uh, that was fun. This is working well. We just need a tiny little tweak, and it will be up and running. And I'll be able to load two containers and not have to own the base. This base is mundo huge money. Let's find what this base costs. This base is 230 grand. This is an expensive base to be owning. And it's nice to have three benches. I don't know why I'd need them. It would be good for, you know, when I have two over at FJ. Like, if I was doing a ton of barge work, that would make sense. But uh, that could be a later process. I'd like to own all the bases at some point. But, you know, I need the cash for it. So, uh, I think we'll end it there. Uh, a little bit of a quicker one here. But uh, this is pretty close to being ready. Uh, a couple fixes. I really am glad that with the new rope update that I don't need to use uh, winches anymore. That saves money, that saves electrical issues, that saves a lot of hookup issues, and it actually makes it easier to run it with ropes. If they're set to two meters, they're not gonna go any longer than two meters. And so that actually works really well. Uh, I should be able to load up this other one with a small edit to this, uh, to this one or this one, maybe both. And I think we should be good to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.